I saw it in the back, but yeah. it was mirror in, it was reversed like mirror, and it looked like Cyrillic, so I didn't edit it. What's his name? It's an yeah. underwater ninja pitch okay, for. Underwater ninja for. I got you. Alright, thanks. Got so you. Let us know. We'll be back. I'll put an APB out for underwater ninja <laughs> for. Thank you. Okay, hey guys. <laughs> this is a damn fun con. It's like, when I was at the reunion, I, I, I'm kind of glad this didn't happen in, in uh, 2019 because I wasn't going to be here. Um, so, uh, I think it's a little bit of a bright side because I've had the best time probably at any show we've done all season. Woo! Yeah, I've been doing a lot of people are doing for us because a lot of people on this current season's tour are here. So it's been great. I love, you know, Sam Smith's one of my best friends. I got to spend time with her. It's been really, really, really great. And I'm so glad that the lights are so bright because I can't see if I can people in my panel. Okay. <laughs> So I need a little help with something. So we're going to get into something I like to call the world's shittiest game show. Do you know this? Woo! Okay, it really is a very shitty game show. We're going to play her shortly. But before we do that, so I, my company, I, I, I formed a production company during the pandemic, and we just made our very first movie. Yeah! And it's a big deal. Um, it's a real movie. But the director is a first-time director. He's one of my best friends. He wrote and directed it. And I started and produced it. Oh, that's me. Um, and, uh, but here's the thing, as he's editing it, usually when you do a rough edit of a movie, you, uh, you sort of fix the sound at the end, right? You make a note, you need this line here. This guy is making, at every edit point, he's like, can you record this dialogue up on your phone and send it to me? Like, it's a temp track. I'm gonna have to go re-record it anyway. So it's kind of like kissing in the wind. And then I'll, I'll record it for him, and then he'll sit, he'll, he'll sit, text me back, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Can you try this? And so I'll do one line at 17 times. So he sent me a line yesterday to do, and this is the line. Hold on, let me find it. And we're gonna do it right here on stage. And I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna give him five options, and then I'm gonna point to you when I'm done, and you're going to stand up and give me a standing ovation and tell him how awesome it was, and then we're gonna send it to him. Okay? Because we know that. Hold on one second. Oh, please, please. <laughs> Yelling's like the best thing you've ever heard, Oscar, all that stuff. Okay, hold on, where's Andrew? Wait, wait a second. Okay, here we go. The line is... Hold on, the line is... That's got other stuff. Oh, here it is. The line is... That's right, you better run, asshole. That's the line, okay? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I'm gonna do it four or five times. That's right, you better run, asshole. And then you're gonna act like it's the best thing you've ever heard. Okay, let me get my voice memos up here. I always want my zippers down, but I know it's not. I've checked it like 50 times. It, it's my privilege of checking the stove before you leave the house. It, 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 it's always my zipper. I, 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 I don't know, I don't I'm dead down there. Uh, <laughs> I'm really not. It's actually a problem. Okay, hold on. Voice memos. Okay, that's why you better run asshole, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Here we go. It's gonna be great. Hey Andrew, um, so I'll try the line like five times and then you can let me know what you think, okay? Okay, take one. That's right, you better run asshole! <laughs> Oh, of course. Sorry, my bad. Uh, 
So Andrew, I guess you can tell now I'm in a panel, this is my director. Um, so I hope you enjoyed these, bye. <laughs> Underwater Ninja 4 is here. Underwater Ninja 4, right there. This is the perfect point to I just took care of business. Hello, Underwater Ninja 4. What is, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Michael? Michael. Okay. Um, you, you won. You, wh whatever you did got you put in the drawing that now you've won. And so I hope you like your presents uh, because, you know, we were just handed the presents. We just handed them out. And so now, I think Rob's written a little ditty for it anyway. Rob, uh, work your mouth. <laughs> Rob has no mic. <laughs> I know. Rob, I just get caught your flat foot in there. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Underwater Ninja 4. Uh, Michael, you won. There you go. <laughs> you won a... I can't read it. Castile? Castel? Who's that? <laughs> um, photo op with, cat, with a castle. Castle. Anyway, we've got a photo up. There you go. You're up. Congratulations! Congratulations, Joe. Whatever you did, they got you here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Congratulations, Michael. And now, DJ, take it away. Please. Thanks so much. <laughs> We're great. We're great. I love giving away prizes. And right now, I'm going to give away a prize to one of you. Woo! So this is something I like to call the World Chinese Game Show. And how it works is this. I'm going to pick a number between 1 and 125. I'm going to write it down on this piece of paper up here. Every time you line up on the side, oh, see, they know, and they know too. Every time you ask me a question, uh, I answer probably 20% of your question, forget what you ask, tell a story about something unrelated, and, uh, and then take your name and your guess, and whoever uh, gets closer, it's very simple, wins something shitty out of my back. And here's the thing. Today it is, it's actually... It's, it's pretty bad. Um, so this is Balmont Hotel, it's hand soap. So it's name brand, but it's, it's really hotel hand soap. And so I, I cleaned up my bag yesterday, I mean right before I came here, like an idiot, forgetting I was coming here and all the good stuff, like um, other shitty things are not in there anymore. So let me guess, but Balmont is a major, it's like a major, I'm taking, I'm taking like $10,000 of it home and giving it out for Christmas. Um, hold on, let me guess, it's a major fashion house. Um, so that between 125, I'm going to guess, easy, easy, everybody will guess that. Okay, so let's, hey, hi, I'm your host, DJ Coles, welcome to the World Cheese Game Show. Uh, thank you so much for being here. We'll start over here. Hi. Maybe. You have to get right up on the mic. Oh, oh, okay. There you are. My name is Evelyn, and this is my first con, and this is the first time I've stood up to ask a question. Welcome! <laughs> this is the first time I've stood up to ask a question. Let me put it on there. It will be easy for both of us. <laughs> this is our mic, though. Hi. I'm normalizing this. I'm a normal person. <laughs> I have a wrinkle right here that my dermatologist is going to sand off tomorrow. <laughs> we are normal. And so so I boring. Oh no! I didn't know! Oh yeah, because your thistles with me. Really awkward question. Um, so, I took a photo with you earlier. Yes. And you smelled really good. <laughs> That's my goal in life, is to smell really good. And I want to know, uh, what makes you smell that way? <laughs> <laughs> it's my natural scent. Uh, no, um, I used some Balmain Hotel soap. <laughs> this morning in the shower, and also I used Prada Black, which is my cologne that I buy at Donatella's perfume and pour him in Miami for like 60% off the cost because I'm a cheap motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> I like that question. See, that's a question I can answer and remember. Um, what's your, oh, no, 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 you have to tell me your name and your guess. My, my name is Evelyn. Uh, Evelyn? Am I supposed to guess one, a number? Um, yeah, you have to guess a number between one and 125. In 125? Yeah. Uh, 67, I guess. 67, that's a great guess. You didn't win, but thank you so much. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you anyone. I'm not, not going to tell you a name like that. How's it going? Hi, uh, my name is Alyssa, and I absolutely care about 
Do <laughs> what? Tell me say that one time. I'm absolutely terrified. I have stage fright. Okay, stage fright. Yeah, the acoustics in here are terrible for us, by the way. My best friend um, forced me to do this, so... <laughs> okay, you have good best friends. Uh, my best friend forced me to do much worse stuff than that. Ty Olsen is being the vampire on the show. He's my best friend. The kind of stuff that Ty forces me to do, you don't want to know. <laughs> So, uh, we were talking yesterday and you said that Lone Star State of Mind was your favorite Sorry. movie to film. It's my favorite movie I ever did, Lone Star yeah, State of Mind. Yeah, so we want to know why. Well, because Lone Star, so Lone, Lone Star State of Mind is a movie I did years ago with Josh Jackson and Jamie King and Ryan Hurst. Do you know Ryan? He was like on, played Opie on uh, Sons of Anarchy. Um, and I, it's about rednecks doing dumb crap. And I'm playing my cousin Steve, who's the dumbest person who's ever lived. And, and I got to watch him watch it, and he couldn't see himself. His catchphrase was, I'm not dumb, you're dumb, right? And he couldn't, he couldn't see himself. And also, I played my father, I did a movie Larry the Cable Guy, and I played my dad. I even had them send a photo of my, I had sent a photo of my dad to them, and they made this exact mustache, that I, a prosthetic mustache that I wore, and people can't see themselves. It makes me so happy to, to mess with my family in this way. Um, so, much, so much so that I started buying antique, ugly crap. And I, so I started to make my will, and I'm making a will on spite. And so I'm buying things for people who've messed with me over the years in my family. Like, I bought my cousin C these English Staffordshire dogs from, like, the mid-1800s. And there's a clause to attach them. When I die, that goes to him, and I'm gonna hire somebody to intermittently spot check it, and if they are not on display for 10 years, they get nothing. <laughs> and I'm doing that for everybody. It's a good question. Don't make me mad, don't get some ugly shit when I die. Um, what's, your, what's your name, your guest? Alyssa. Alyssa. And my guess is 32. Thank you, Alyssa. Thanks for playing the role of Shady's Game Show. You're amazing at this. Hello. Hi. Um. Oh, I have to tell you something. It's a little intermission. Um, I did something I've never done before, and since my panel's are like food syrup, I'm going to share it with you. Are there a lot of children here? No. Okay, great. Um, so, listen. It was my birthday at the beginning of June, right? <laughs> um, and, uh, thank you. And so I, uh, so I went to brunch with my friends in Beverly Hills. I wanted to avoid my, my birthday altogether, but they forced me out of the house. I tried to pretend like I was out of town, but they called my bluff because they could see my lights on. And so, and so they took me to Beverly Hills, and so we had a nice brunch, a nice boozy brunch, and they took me down to Rodale, and they bought me something from Gucci. Very nice, and very good friends. And then afterward, we, we went to a di another we went to a dive bar, and then got a little drunker, and then we went to met up with another birthday party in Hollywood, and they got even drunker, and then the bar was closing, and I, I couldn't get an Uber. Uber was like $150 at that time of night, so like, you know, the surge pricing, bull crap they do to us. And so I was like, I may be stranded here, and then my friend, like a miracle, cruised through. She's like, hey, I'm just stopping in to uh, say hello to people, but I'm going back to the Oaks, and the Oaks is my bar in my neighborhood. And she was like, I can take you there. And I'm like, cool. So I go in there, and every person I know from the neighborhood, I'm the captain of the trivia team that meets twice a week there. Yes! And we're badass. And so, and so I, and so I, they were all there, so they bought me shots. And here's the thing, lights out. I had a party I don't remember having. There were 50 people in my house. And then, here's how I know I had the party, because I woke up the next morning like this. I can't believe I don't hurt. That. <laughs> I've never done that before in my entire life. I've never seen it before. I've never saw this guy before in my entire life, right? He was not bad looking, right? But I'm like, so I'm like, I'm like, so I'm like, I'm like what do I do? I, I don't even know what to do. I, I, and so I, I get out of bed like this, and I go into the living room, I start texting people. I'm like, do you know somebody who's blonde and stubble? And they're like, who, who, what? And I'm like, there's somebody who that I don't know that I've never seen before until right at this moment. And so, and then he, so I waited for him to wake up. And they're like, dump, dump him and come over and hang out with us. And so I waited for him to wake up. And I was like, I started to say this. He did, he did this, hey, how's it going? I'm like, I don't know you, do I? Like, I couldn't even lie. I couldn't even make it like a lie. A very nice guy. His phone was dead, thank God. And then we went to, I was like, Let, let's take an Uber back to the to the place before I apparently met you. And I charged the phone up. And then my friends were there, and they were like, dude, your magic power is you don't look blacked out at all when you're drunk. It's not good. He turns into Frankenstein when he's drunk, but I don't. 
And so the thing is, the moral of the story is, no matter how old you get, you still do dumb shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually kind of encouraged for the future. Getting old is not a death sentence. It means that it means the longer you stay alive, the more chance it is you may be your soulmate. So <laughs> that's it. Hello. And I was going to tweet it to you guys, but it wouldn't have had the same. <laughs> exactly. And also Twitter's going away. Hi, sorry. Hi. Hi. Uh, so my question is, since you have such a large and incredible body of work, have you ever forgotten you were in a role to the point that you watch something and you're like, oh, there I am. <laughs> I'm rewatching Lost and I forgot that you were in a flashback with Ruth. I never forget that I'm in things, but I've forgotten that I was in stuff with people. I walked up to Richard Jenkins at a party and said I wanted to do a movie with him. And he was like, we did a movie together called The Core in 2003 in Vancouver. And like six months over, I saw you every day. And he was in all my scenes. I totally forgot about it. I completely forgot he was in that movie. I knew that I'd seen it before, but I thought maybe I'd seen him at a party. I totally forgot. And, and it, it, it's not old age. It's, it's, it's probably not being present. Or it's because I just realized recently that deodorant and and uh, antiperspirant were not the same thing. There's aluminum oxide in antiperspirant. Now I'm really worried that the antiperspirant I've been using is going to cause me Alzheimer's. I worry about everything. I worry about earthquakes. I'm a, I, I once co convinced myself that I had scabies from wet with D. I, I, I just got back from shooting a movie in the Philippines. I'm a panicker and a worrier, right? Mm -hmm. I'm starting to meditate and teasing up. Um, but I just got back from my movie in the Philippines, and my skin was itching really bad. And so I went on, I went on WebMD, which should have a lockout after midnight. <laughs> and so I went on WebMD, and it, it said, I put it on my symptoms, and I was like, oh my god, I have scabies. Have you been in a tropical climate? Yes. Scabies burrow into your skin, and you have to burn all your sheets. And I was like, have you treated scabies? And they were like, lie soap. Lie soap. Lies when they put on dead bodies. You know, like, thanks for doing this often. And so, so I start calling pharmacies. And like, finally, one of the pharmacists said this. This is not the 1940s. We don't have lie soap. So I left an uh, emergency message on my dermatologist uh, answering, like, answering service. And I'll, I'll be there as I was there, right, to open a business. So I go in, I'm all nervous, I'm all red and blotchy, I'm worried about having a burn on my lens and all this stuff. <laughs> and it says you have to do. And so I sit down, and the doctor goes to touch me without gloves on, and I'm like, don't touch me, you can get scabies, right? So he puts on gloves, like, he puts down one of those, you know, magnifying visor things, and does this. You got dry skin. <laughs> My whole life is like that. Oh, by the way, speaking of that, I lost some red uh, sunglasses here last night. If anybody finds them, the red prescription sunglasses, it's my ninth pair, don't feel sorry for me. Uh, <laughs> but the red prescription sunglasses, and I lost them somewhere. I may have been running, or they may be on that, have been on that back table or in selfies. Just let you know if you come across any. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, what was the pin? Thank you so much. It takes a village, it really does. <laughs> This is why I don't smoke weed. I can't, I, I'm already forgetful enough. I, w I was experimenting with weed for a while. Did I ever tell you the time I thought I was very big for reincarnated? <laughs> Did I tell you the story? Okay, I have, to, I have to tell you. What's your name and your guess? My name is Gabrielle, uh, 23. Okay. Okay, real fast, I'll make this very fast. It won't be that fast. But it is, it, so when we first got legalized in California, everybody went down to Venice Beach and met a dancing, I mean a dancing pot league costume and said they had back problems and you went to the weed doctor and you got a prescription for a, public, a weed card, right? Everybody did it. You know. And so I, I went and got, so I went and I went, it was a Tuesday night, a Tuesday afternoon and I went to show my weed card at a dispensary. And I went in and like started browsing, and I've never smoked weed before, and I, I was like an adult, like a, a real grown up. And I, I'm, one, I'm whatever age then that would still make me be 38 today. Whatever math you could do to still make me be 38, that's what it was. Um, I think it was like 2005. And so I go in there, and all the weed strands are scary sounding. It was like Jabble Seaman and Life Wrecker and all this, all this terrible stuff. So I found the most innocuous, the most innocent kind of weed called train wreck. So I bought, so I bought a little train wreck and went to my to my little neighborhood market and bought some rolling papers and went home and rolled a joint. I've never rolled a joint before. And so and it was like kind of like an envelope. And so it kept opening and the weed kept falling out. So I was smoking it like this. Right? And I was only getting little wasp breaths, like little 
<laughs> not enough to make a solid stream. So I smoked quite a bit of it, right? So anyway, so I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I don't feel good. <laughs> I'll start breathing like really hard, and I'm like, I think I'm overdosing weed, for real, for real, right? So I go, I go on the internet, and you're like, what do you do when you smoke too much weed? And every, every they say, you cannot overdose with weed, you cannot overdose with weed, you, like all the hits, right? So I'm like, oh, thank God. So I took that one, and one says, do something not challenging to get your mind off the fact that you're high. And another one said, if you have to ask yourself that you're high, you, you're, you're high, right? <laughs> and so I was like, no, I don't have to ask myself. I know. My heart was beating, I was sweating, I never sweat. And so anyway. So I sit down and turn on PBS and start watching this documentary. And it's about Mary Pickford, the world's first movie star. So she was famous around the turn of the century, like in the early, like in the, in the, in the, in the talk, I mean, she was at, before the talkies, right? She was in the silent movies. And she was like the biggest movie star the world had ever seen because before film, you, humans had never been able to experience living in Shanghai, China, and Toledo, Ohio on the same day, right? It was the first time humans could ever share a common experience in our history. And so she was the biggest movie star in the whole world. So I start watching this, and about halfway through it, I start predicting things that are going to happen to her. <laughs> like, I'm not joking. Like, I'm like, she's going to get on a boat with her second husband and go to England and wave at people on the, for the back of it, and she did. <laughs> and then I'm like, she's going to feel dissatisfied with the studio system and then and form a, a thing with Charlie Chaplin, and she did. So I start freaking out, like, how do I know this? How do I know this? How do I know this? <laughs> right? So then I'm like, so this keeps happening, and I'm like, I'm like, if at the end of this she's 80 years old and her husband hands her an honorary Oscar in her living room, if he does that, I'm gonna lose my shit. He did, and I did. So I feel, I'm like, I must be very big for green car and she feels unappreciated. I feel unappreciated. I went on, and she died the same year that I'm born. Oh. Dude, yes. dude, I start crying. Like, imagine this. I know who I am. Right? By this time, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning, Los Angeles time. I heard the East Coast. Everybody's dead asleep. I know I did this because the next morning I woke up and I had messages like this. Hey, this is John. Who the hell is Mary Pinkford? What's going on over there? <laughs> so, and one of the messages I sent to John said this. Hey, it's DJ. I'm Mary Pinkford. Call me back. <laughs> no one a lot, right? So I'm like, I, I'm having this existential crisis the next day. Who am I? Where did I come from? And I'm like, and then I'm like, Maybe I got so high, I hallucinated. Can you hallucinate from weed? Da, da, da. You cannot hallucinate from weed. I'm like, damn it. So, and then, so I'm sitting there, like, have to reliving this. And I'm like, I think I've just, I've had a moment. And so I, I was like, well, let me just make sure that I didn't hallucinate. So I went back to make sure. I, I pulled up the television listings from the night before on PBS.com to see if it actually played. And it had played. But here's the thing, as sometimes at the end of the night, they run out of programming and they play the last two things twice. I was so high, I sat through it the whole first time. And the middle of the second time, I was like, this is familiar to me. Did I just see this? We just got my friend. It's not for me. It's just not for me. That really happened to scare the hell out of me. Thank <laughs> you.